Hello and welcome to Blythbury Business News. For this edition, I'm joined by Ed Bowie, uh, Chief Executive of Beowulf Mining, and Rasmus Blomquist, who's Managing Director of Beowulf's wholly owned subsidiary, Graffin Tech. Um, gentlemen, welcome to the show. For the viewers' benefit, Beowulf listed in London on the AIM market uh, with a market capitalization of around £15 million sterling and the symbol of BEM. Right, um, Ed, let's get started. Can you give us a brief introduction, an overview to Beowulf and its portfolio of operations across Europe? Uh, absolutely, and uh, good morning. Um, so Beowulf is actually also listed on the spotlight market in, in Sweden. Um, and about 80% of our register is actually based in Sweden. So uh, dual listed company. Uh, we have three business units. The, uh, we, we have Jokmok Iron Mines, which is a uh, developing the Kalak Iron Ore project in northern Sweden. Uh, we have uh, the uh, Grafentech, which Rasmus will talk more about. And we have Vardar Minerals, which is an exploration play focused on the Balkans and specifically in Kosovo. Okay, thanks for that introduction. Rasmus, let's now talk about graphene tech. Um, the focus of the company is um, graphite, uh, a graphite anode materials plant. Tell us more. Yeah, thank you and uh, good morning. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, graphene tech is, uh, is um, planning a downstream production facility in the Gigawas area on the west coast of Finland uh, with uh, aim to start production by 2027. Uh, the plan is to start with the uh, production of 20,000 tons uh, graphite and old material, so-called uh, coated uh, spherical graphite, and then uh, uh, scale up to 60,000 uh, tons when the market emerges. Uh, the reason uh, why we're very focused on uh, the downstream uh, plant at the moment is that uh, that's where we see that uh, most of the value is created. So the plan is to start importing graphite concentrate to start with uh, doing uh, several kind of uh, downstream processes in the Gigawas area, including uh, uh, spherization, purification, and coating. Uh, and uh, also what we see is uh, there's a big need for these kind of materials uh, within Europe because there's actually no downstream uh, production in Europe at the moment. Everything is done in China. Uh, so if we can uh, be a first mover in Europe, uh, we see a big uh, advantage. Okay. So as well as moving towards the plant, you've also got some uh, exploration assets. Um, tell us a bit about those and how you plan to integrate those in the future. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, so we have uh, a number of uh, exploration assets uh, for graphite in Finland. Uh, they're all at different uh, stages. The most advanced one is the Eidolampi project uh, in, uh, in uh, eastern Finland, which is uh, one of Europe's largest, uh, uh, <laughs> largest natural graphite deposits. And then we also uh, have uh, a nearby uh, project called Rapusjärvi, which also is of uh, very big interest. Uh, so the plan for these uh, projects is that, uh, as I mentioned, uh, that the plan is to uh, to import graphite uh, to start with. We have done a lot of test work on uh, 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 imported graphite with good results, but then uh, we need uh, for a strategic uh, supply for the future, we're also uh, aiming to produce uh, domestic graphite that we can then use in uh, downstream facilities. And uh, yeah, we have done a lot of test work on these uh, different deposits, especially on Eidolamp, which shows it's a uh, very good quality material for downstream processing. And we also uh, done some, uh, even if much earlier stages, work on the Rabusjärvi deposit, which also shows to be very similar graphite to the Eidolampi one. Okay. Now, the location of a site is a key decision. You've chosen to uh, locate the, the graphite um, anode materials plant, and I hope I get this pronunciation right, at uh, Gigavasa. Um, why there? What, what's significant about the location there, please? Yeah, uh, main thing is that um, the Gigavasa area is a site dedicated to battery uh, supply chain. So it's an industrial site where the municipalities are building infrastructure out for, for these kind of uh, industrial developments. Uh, another thing is that uh, we're just sitting next to, uh, 
to the Freya battery plant uh, development, uh, which is obvious where we hope that could be a future customer for us. So it's uh, very well located. Another very positive thing about uh, being in Finland and west coast of Finland is that uh, uh, we can uh, uh, get 100% renewable energy and also Finland have one of the cheap uh, energies in Europe. So that's a big uh, advantage for us. Okay. Um, coming back to you, Ed, please, if I may, um, you know, you're on the record. You've said before the importance, the significance uh, of the uh, EU's Critical Raw Materials Act. Um, explain for the viewers how that is potentially significant for Beowulf and indeed for Graphintech. Uh, so the Critical Raw Materials Act was introduced uh, or came into force last year, um, and that has defined a number of commodities as critical raw materials uh, for Europe. Graphite is one of those. And as such, uh, Europe uh, is, and, uh, is, is targeting 10% of uh, consumption to be mined within Europe and 40% uh, of downstream processing to be uh, done within Europe of, of, of European consumption. Uh, at the moment, there is no downstream processing um, and there is no mining within the EU of, of graphite. There is, is some within Europe, but outside the EU. So uh, for uh, Europe to meet its, its uh, requirements under for, for, with, for the graphite space, uh, there's a lot of development that needs to happen. Um, why is this important? Well, uh, China currently uh, accounts for 75% of all graphite uh, production and processing, at least, and certain elements, they control the entire market. So the spheronization of graphite, uh, that they, they, they basically control 99% uh, of, of the market. So uh, in order to, to, to secure supply chains for the long term, uh, the Critical Raw Materials Act is critical. Um, under that act, we can uh, register the, 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 the projects as strategic projects. That should speed up uh, the permitting process and also gives us availability of, of additional funds um, from the EU. So, uh, so it, it, it's important for us, um, but as much as anything, it demonstrates the critical nature of the uh, of the graphite supply chain, and and that's something that we, we we certainly are looking to exploit going forward. Okay, thanks for that. So graphite clearly very important for Europe and the the sustainability of Europe and making, as you say, secure supply chains across Europe. Finally, Rasmus, let me come back to you. Um, what can viewers, investors, potential investors, what can they expect to see in the coming months? What's the headlines we should be looking out for emerging from graphene tech in the next few months? Yeah, so we are doing a lot of progress in the Gigawas area and uh, working uh, with uh, diff several different uh, parallel uh, work streams. Uh, the most important ones is the pre-feasibility study and the environmental impact assessment, which are both aimed to be completed by end of uh, this year. Uh, we have completed uh, most, most of the venture scale test work, but uh, now very focused on optimization to reduce uh, water consumption, chemical consumption in the process, which will also uh, have an important impact of, uh, of the OPEX of the final project. Thank you very much, uh, Rasmus. Ed, thanks for joining us today. That was uh, some of the team from Beowulf Mining with a particular focus on the, uh, the graphite assets there in Finland. That's it for this edition of Blythe Ray Business News. Thanks for watching.